in line with the promise that I personally made. Thank you. Senator, thank you. Thank you. Senator Heinrich. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, welcome, Madam Secretary. Um, we've had some discussion here on the on the deficit, and I thought it might be helpful if you could remind us of the relative role of the Trump tax cuts in creating the current structural deficit. Well, the Trump tax cuts um, added hugely to the deficit. I, as I recall, it was something like two trillion dollars over over ten years, yeah. and so they that is a major contributor to the deficits that we have. Uh, pivoting quickly to the, the banking situation, um, as chair designate of the Joint Economic Committee, I was very pleased that the administration acted quickly to ensure that small banks and depositors um, don't take the brunt of the Silicon Valley Bank failure. But I also suspect that this is a disaster that could have been prevented. Um, when Congress voted to roll back key regulatory provisions back in 2018. I was also vice chair of the JEC at the time. And I warned that weakening these rules put the health of the banking system at risk. And in fact, I re released a report, a JEC report, that named SVB, SVB Financial Group specifically as one of the banks that would face nearly none of the enhanced regulations originally put in place in the Dodd-Frank legislation. Um, how can regulators shore up confidence and stability in this asset class of banks? And, and do they need additional tools in order to improve the stability throughout the entire financial system? So I absolutely think that it's appropriate to conduct a very thorough review of what factors um, were responsible for the failure of these banks. And it is true that there was legislation that um, weaken bank regulation, and there were also um, regulatory decisions by the Federal Reserve and other banking agencies. There's also a question of supervision and how that's conducted. I was pleased to see that um, Vice Chair for Supervision, the Fed's Vice Chair for Supervision, Michael Barr, is undertaking and will report by May uh, on an investigation of what's involved, and um, certainly we should be reconsidering uh, what we need to uh, shore up regulation to prevent this. This was a very unusual set of circumstances that Silicon Valley Bank faced. Um, uh, it, it appears that they had sig significant interest rate risk that they were subject to, and um, an exceptionally high, over 90% um, of their deposits were uninsured. And that is, you know, That number is well outside of the norm. So in that sense, this was an unusual bank, but I, I think it's appropriate to review all of that. Do you have any thoughts at all on the nature of, I mean, this is basically our first digital bank run in a way, the, the way that the... Uh, the, the fire sort of spread. Yes. How should we be thinking about that in the role of providing proper oversight and de-risking these financial institutions uh, going forward, given that that is very much the world we live in now? So this was an overwhelmingly rapid um, run on a bank. To the best of my knowledge, we have never seen deposits flee at the pace that they did from Silicon Valley Bank. Now, many of the depositors were, um, you know, startup tech firms um, that work with venture capitalists that also bank. And there was, as you say, an internet essentially shouting fire in a movie theater. And it, perhaps it's the case that um, now in the world we, we live in, that although this was a small community with a disproportionate uh, share of Silicon Valley banks deposits, this kind of thing may more readily happen now. And it means that in general, when we do liquidity stress tests on banks or think about liquidity requirements, perhaps some of the assumptions that go into um, modeling the pace at which right. deposits might flee, maybe some of those need to be 
updated and rethought, but um, th this is a new phenomenon. We haven't seen this before. I think I think it's an important needs question. Rethinking. It's the world we live in today. Um, some House Republicans recently introduced a bill that would force Treasury uh, to prioritize covering debt held by foreign debt holders like the Chinese govern government before um, financing Department of Defense, the VA, really every federal funding priority outside of Social Security and Medicare. Uh, you've referred to this plan as default by another name and have pointed out that it it, that it's really not logistically feasible for Treasury to prioritize payments uh, given how Treasury operates. What do you think of this plan to prioritize things like foreign investments over current and former service members and other obligations that we have as federal government? Well, we have a set of bills that come due, and it's the, our obligation, and my obligation as Treasury Secretary to see that those bills are paid, and not some of the bills, and to decide which bills are more important than other bills, um, simply to pay the bills for programs and spending that Congress has authorized. That's why I say prioritization is default by another name. Not paying any of our bills is default, and when you think about the pain that it would cause to Social Security recipients, um, to food stamp recipients, uh, you name it, people to vendors who've supplied services to the government and have their own payrolls to meet, to be told they're not going to be um, paid, the government isn't going to honor those bills, that's a default. And um, rating, rating agencies, particularly Fitch, has already clearly indicated that a failure to pay all of the government's bills when they're due would um, certainly compromise our credit rating. So I, this has never been tried. It's been rejected by um, all past Treasury secretaries. And I would say our systems, our payment systems, are simply set up to pay all the government's bills when they come due. They're not set up to divide payments into different types as a general matter and to be able to say, yes, this, 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 and this. We're paying in these other things. We're holding back. Um, for many agencies, um, payments of all types are all mixed together in ways that couldn't be disentangled. Thank you, Chairman.